and we are let it cook on the highest heat for 10 minutes. Then we will lower it down for another six minutes approximately until it's ready. Today guys, we're gonna be reviewing Omar's Paella Valenciana. I got quite a few requests on doing another Paella video and specifically reviewing his Paella. So today we're gonna to be doing that. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many, many years all over the US and Europe. And while well, I've been cooking for quite a few years here in Spain and I've made quite a few paellas myself. So if you do like the video, then don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And let's get started. Hola, foodtubers. I'm Omar Ali Boy. I'm a chef. Well, Jamie does have a Spanish chef making a paella, so this should be good. And I've been cooking a Spanish food since I was a little boy. Today, I'm going to be cooking the world famous Spanish national mm. Paella Valenciana. If there is a dish in Spain that brings family mm. together, it will be paella. I'm putting my reputation on the line because Valencianos are very particular with this recipe, like Napolitanos are with their pizza. That's very true. Paella is from Valencia. It's taken very seriously. So when people see it messed up like the pizza, they can get a little upset. You don't need to overcomplicate things, but there are some ingredients that you should have. You can substitute a few. And the most important thing, obviously, is the method of making it, which is the most important. So I have a quite a lot of ingredients here. Uh, artichokes, green beans, broad beans, as you can see chicken and rabbit, the two main meats. Mm -hmm. The real heroes of this dish, the saffron. This is mm -hmm. just fundamental to the recipe, essentially. So let's start, okay? I'm just heating up this beautiful paella pan. That's not your typical paella pan that he's using. If you have a thin bottom paella pan and it's dented, you don't want to be using that because then the dish is not going to cook evenly and you're going to have, you know, some burned there, you're going to have some other rice not cooked there. And I'm going to start preparing the saffron, okay? Spanish saffron is the most expensive in the world. The crop is very small and it's mm -hmm. difficult and hard to find outside of Spain. What makes it different is that it is toasted as opposed to mm. sun-dried. Saffron is a very expensive spice. It's one of the most expensive in the world. You have to pick each one of those threads individually and then on top of that they have to separate the threads between being a good quality a higher quality and a lesser quality so it's very important to know that you're buying from a reputable dealer and not buying fake saffron because some of the fake saffron is made out of unedible ingredients this from another country and toasted ourselves okay so i'm just going to fold it in a kind of an envelope and I'm going to put it into mm. this hot pan just for a few seconds and mm. that will give extra fragrance and it will be easier to mm. release all that beautiful aromas and smokiness into the stock. So this is a very good little trick that Omar is doing. You can toast the saffron in tin foil and this will release, it will heat up the saffron and help release some of the aroma, the fragrance from it. You can also put it directly into the pan as you're sauteing the sofrito and the rest of the ingredients. This will help release a lot of the, um, the fragrance as well. Or you can also add it to warm water, but toasting it is a very nice touch. I've had it for about 10 seconds on each side. That is enough, okay? I have the chicken and the rabbit. And first thing, mm. a generous amount of salt. Omar is using what looks like salt molden, which is a flaky salt. It's a much bigger salt than fine table salt. So you have two choices when searing and cooking proteins. You can either add the salt directly to the meat first by seasoning it and then searing that meat, or you can add the salt to the pan with some oil and then sear the meat. There is a lot of ingredients going into that pan. Good olive oil, extra virgin, always. And for this, you want to use olive oil. Yes, extra virgin olive oil. With fried rice, that's a no-no. With paella, it's a must. You don't want to be using any other type of oil if you're making the paella. This will add flavor to the dish. You see how it's crackling, the salt? The pan is really hot and we're gonna go with the meat. Have a couple mm. of chicken thighs with the bone and the skin cut in half and sort of like a quarter of a rabbit mm. approximately. But again, if you cannot get rabbit or you don't like it, just put more chicken or some pork rib, that will do. Like Omar saying, if you need to substitute the chicken or the rabbit, if you don't like rabbit, you can add more chicken or if you don't, 
want um, either or if you want to supplement the rabbit you can also add pork. Paella is not necessarily a dish that you have to follow every single ingredient. If you go to a restaurant obviously you expect what it should be or what is should be considered a paella valenciana. If you're making it at home it's another thing and the old paellas in the old days the farmers used what they had. So it's not necessarily something that you have to have the specific necessary ingredients you can supplement. Not with everything, but with some things you can. We need to cook this meat until it's really dark. And that's the color that you want in the chicken. That beautiful, nice golden brown color. This high heat has given the meat a really nice brown caramelized color and flavor. I'm just gonna make a little bit of a space for the veggies. I have some runner beans already prepared and some broad beans. Alright, now for the beans, you can use broad beans, runner beans, you can use green beans. Another bean that they use for the paella valenciana are lima beans, or specifically called garrofón, which is a very large lima bean. If you can't get it, which more than likely you can't, then you can substitute it for another bean or use what you have. If you have broad beans, use those. If you have lima beans, if you have green beans, use them. And I want this to get really brown again. At this point I need to add the artichoke, very fundamental ingredient in the paella. Take the outer leaves from the bottom of the flower. If you're using the artichokes I would suggest getting the baby artichokes as the babies will cook a little faster, they're easier to handle as well, and if you don't want to go this route with cooking the artichokes then I would say get the pre-cooked can artichokes if you don't want to deal with it. And if you are cutting a lot of artichokes you may want to wear gloves because they will stain your hands. Gonna cut the stock, peel this stock, you can do it either with a peri knife or with a peeler. Cut the artichoke around here, peel it with a peri knife on the outer part, and leave sort of like a diamond shape, like a mushroom. Cut it in half, cut it in quarter, mm. and this inner hair which is inside, which is not edible, we just need to mm -hmm. remove it. Omar's doing very good. You can use a peri knife or you can use a potato peeler to prepare the artichokes. A peri knife you need a little more skill with. It's very easy to do after, you know, 50, 100 artichokes. If you're using baby artichokes, it won't be as big of a deal by removing the hair. It's easier than, say, having the massive artichokes. And they're also easier to peel the little ones than having the large artichokes. And I would suggest that if you are doing this like him and you are going to be adding raw artichokes in that you add them first before you add the beans because the artichokes will take longer to cook than the beans. I'm going to add a couple of artichokes in total so that it all browns nicely. This is not a recipe that needs a lot of stirring actually otherwise juices will be released and it will start poaching and boiling. Now that's not what we are mm. looking for. I'm gonna go with the next ingredient Garlic, very important in Spanish mm. cuisine. I'm just gonna finely chop it. A couple of garlic cloves for this recipe will be sufficient. I've put the heat down, give it a little stir, and I'm not gonna leave it there for too long. Maybe just about a minute or 30 mm. seconds even, depending on the heat. Garlic is a very common ingredient in Spanish cuisine. You will literally see that they add it, not to everything, but to a lot of dishes. Gambas al ajillo, to paella, to sofrito, to a lot of things. Pimenton, smoked paprika as the world knows it. That's what gives fantastic flavor to a lot of Spanish recipes. Give it a little stir. And pimenton or smoked paprika is again one of those very common ingredients that you will see in a lot of dishes here. You can get sweet, you can get spicy, or you can get smoked. But if you don't want that spiciness, then you can get the sweet pimenton dulce and it will still taste very good. And I'm going to add straight away the grated tomatoes. I have two grated tomatoes over here mm. and I think I'm only going to use half. Put the heat right back mm. up and now it's time for a stirring. So the tomato is the base for the sofrito or for the marca. Find the ripest, reddest tomatoes that you have, the juiciest ones that you have. You grate them on the uh, cheese grater or if you want to be quick about it, take the core out, cut them into slices, put them into a little cup and then blend them. And then, well, it's done in a second instead of um, standing there for like five, 10 minutes grating tomatoes. 
the juice going everywhere. As well, this tomato will cook in about two minutes, no more. Take a look at this. Really nicely browned, loads of color, loads of depth. You know, even the veggies, they are no longer green. This is not an al dente, good looking type of thing. All those reds, all those browns meat means flavor. I have a stock here. I'm just gonna pour this chicken stock. And he's also adding hot stock to the dish. This is something that I always say, because it's true. With risotto, with paella, you always want to add hot stock to it and not colder at room temp because then you drop the temperatures. And it's very important when cooking that you cannot drop the temperature when making the paella. Give it a little stir. Let's go back to the saffron. Gonna use mm -hmm. about half a gram, crush it a bit so that it spreads mm -hmm. out a little bit more. Let's bring this to the boil and add the rice. And now with the rice, okay, I'm going to be using about 250 grams, which is half of this package. But if you don't find a Spanish rice or something that is called paella rice, just use a, a short grain rice, okay? Never use basmati or jasmine or long grain in general. It's one of the rices which absorbs most water. Take a quick look. The most common rice that they use for paella here is bomba rice. It has a wonderful ability to absorb large amounts of liquid. There are several other types of rice that they grow here for paella, not just bomba. Um, if you cannot find even bomba though, then you can substitute it with a borio or you can substitute it with a similar rice. Look at the color. I'm just going to add about 250 grams of this rice. Give it a little stir. And a good rule of thumb, I typically stick around 50 to 60 grams per person um, because when you're making this, it's one thing to keep in mind, it's not just gonna be the rice. You also have the chicken, the rabbit, you have vegetables as well. Um, you have a lot of other things going on. So unless you're super, super hungry, 50 to 60 grams of rice per person is a good standard. And you do not want to rinse the rice. This is something that we do not do. These are not Asian types of rice and we do not rinse them at all. They go directly into the dish. Otherwise, it's not going to be the same and especially for risotto. Make sure it spreads quite nicely. Just leave it for a couple of minutes so that the rice flattens and evens, and then we'll just let it be. Mm. Okay, this is getting back up to the boil. Last stir, and we'll let it cook on the highest heat for 10 minutes. Then we will lower it down mm. for another six minutes approximately until it's ready. Now, unlike the risotto where you're continuously stirring this, we want that to be creamy right because the more you store it the more starch is released and the creamier the risotto is with the paella it's the opposite you don't want it creamy you want it a little on the drier side the result of that is when you leave the paella to cook for so long without stirring it the starch and everything reduces and it creates on the bottom what's called socarrat this is all the starch and all the juices that have reduced the fats and they become very crispy and if you make it perfect, it's very tasty. Because it is starchy, um, you can run the risk if you're cooking a little too fast or you're, you have the heat up too high, that it can burn very easily. You can see here that this part, the water is below the rice and that one is just over there. Mm. It's very important that you don't steer your paella at any point after the beginning because uh, otherwise the rice will release the starch and it will become a stagy. Mm. We are going to add the rosemary, three mm. sprigs. We are gonna create a little bit of a lead. And adding the rosemary is a very important step as well. It's common to add rosemary to this dish and adding it like this at the end and then putting a lid on it will infuse a lot of the aroma from the fresh rosemary. I'm going to lower down the heat because this rice will still need about five minutes on a low heat and another five minutes resting. And I think that will be the perfect rice with the perfect socarrat underneath, which mm. is the crispy bit that forms through all that oils and fats that goes down and a bit of the starch of the rice mm -hmm. and how it crispens up at the bottom. That's the most tasty part. It's been resting for about four or five minutes. So now is the time to unveil it. Mmm, it smells beautiful. The rice looks like it's perfectly cooked. You can see a bit of the burn bits on the sides. 
that's exactly what I was looking for, I have to say. And the socarrat on the bottom, normally you mm -hmm. just take the rosemary off, put it into one side, and you serve a mix of the top, the bottom, the side, the center, mm -hmm. just so that everyone gets a bit off this part. A nice piece of mm -hmm. meat, a little bit of the rice, mixed with the socarrat, always scra scraping the bottom. Tiene muy buena pinta. It looks very good. It looks like he did an excellent job when making this, and it looks like a very good recipe. In many families, they like it with uh, a wedge of lemon. They will put it on the side and you squeeze it yourself, okay? So we'll never squeeze mm. it all over. Mm. Mm. It's amazing how tasty this rice dish can be. Every aroma, every fragrance of spices, vegetables, I mean, it's all in. And there you go, paella, a Spanish national dish. If you want me to make any other Spanish recipe, please say it on the comment box below and I'll do my best. Omar did a very good job with making this video. It's an easy step-by-step -step video, very easy for beginners, especially because it's in English and he is a Spanish chef. I would say though that if you're making this at home, instead of following this exactly, is to prep all the ingredients before. Prep the artichokes, prep the beans, prep the sofrito, the tomatoes, prep everything. That way it'll save you time when you're cooking and you're not going to be, your attention is not going to be elsewhere while making it. So either watch his recipes or watch mine. And if you did like this video, then let me know in your comments down below or if you have any other suggestions and be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you are interested in another easy and tasty recipe or another interesting video, then be sure to click here. And I will see you guys again very soon. Take care.